Since you clicked the title not knowing if you should watch the video, let me dispel your doubts real quick. I've been thinking about this for quite some time and I've came to conclusion that there is not a single solution that works flawlessly to make sure the first layer is perfect every time for every filament and in different scenarios. All we have is some bootleg attempts at making this process manageable at best. There's not a single sensor, device or procedure that could make this process fully automatic. Tell me in the comments your experiences with first layer problems, but keep in mind that if something works great for you, may not work so well for the other person. I will include at the very end of the video a couple of my insane ideas, so feel free to skip. Subscribe if you like this type of content. Now let's get back to the first layer. The most common workaround is using bed leveling sensors like BL Touch or CR Touch, which compensates for imperfections in the bed and the fact that the bed is not always perfectly parallel to the print head. But there are other ways to achieve this, like using the bed that has been machined to near perfection, or having a true auto leveling system like kinematic bed. They all cost money though, so you rarely see them on a budget printers. Instead, you get a flimsy 2mm bed that bends like a banana just by looking at it. But even with near perfect manufacturing and ultra sturdy components, you still won't get a perfect layer without breaking a sweat. When you take a step back and think about the actual problem we've been trying to solve the entire time, you realize it's just about making the first layer perfect across the whole build surface. And what are the elements that prevent us from achieving that goal? Buckle up because there are a lot of them. Thermal expansion, material fatigue, imperfect manufacturing methods, poor quality materials, axis twist, uneven bed surfaces, warping, mechanical wear, bed adhesion issues, temperature fluctuations, vibrations during printing, dust and debris on the bed, and even the user error. There are probably a lot more, but you get the idea. It's a problem so complex, nobody has found the S-tier solution to. There are some things that do not have a solution like user being an idiot or debris on the bed. Well, the second one may be solvable, but probably not worth overthinking. However, all the other problems have been to some degree addressed. Just not by a single solution, but through a various of combination of methods. Let's start with things that are not bad sensors, but are worth mentioning. First thing is making sure bed is as flat as possible under every circumstance. And as far as I know, aluminum is not really great at this. In fact, having a cast iron or even granite bed would be better since they are a lot more thermally stable. Unfortunately, they are both heavy as hell and would probably cost an arm and a leg. Not to mention, they may be too heavy for machines that have a moving bed like Corexi printers. Then there's glass. It's alright, but it can crack and certain filaments like PETG stick too much to it. We are off to bad start already. The second problem is making sure the build surface is perfectly parallel to the printhead plane. The most common workaround is to have leveling knobs on the build plate corners, but those eventually go out of the alignment. In my opinion, kinematic bed is the true MVP here. With the help of a distance sensor, it can automatically realign those planes as many times as you want and do that fully automatically, so you don't even have to move your butt out of the chair. It is expensive, sure, but it does solve one very annoying problem. The more you disturb your build plate, the more you have to adjust these knobs. So what's left? Ah yeah, the good old software compensations. Before I get to bed leveling sensors, there's one very, very important workaround I have to mention. Axis twist. No matter what printer you have, as long as printhead is moving left and right, and you are not probing your bed with nozzle, you may be susceptible to axis twisting. I can easily demonstrate it on my printer since I have a worn carriage. Due to axis twist, the probe distance from the nozzle will vary depending on the distance from the left edge. Clipper and Marlin can compensate for that. 
And if you are not using nozzle as a probe, you should perform compensation before doing anything else. Three workarounds later, the problem is still not solved, but we are finally on the topic of bad sensors and why they all suck. Now, don't get me wrong, it is possible to get a nice first layer reliably, but is far from ideal, and I believe we as a community can improve things a lot, or maybe even come up with the new solutions until finally something will be truly hands-free. This is one of those problems that is really hard to universally solve, because so many different printer types, bed types, hotten types and even sensors exist. Recently I received an eddy current sensor from Big3 Tech. Full transparency, it was free of charge. They didn't even expect a review, but here it is anyway. I'm pretty sure they also didn't anticipate what I did to it, and I bet you won't either. So stick around and see what happens when you send an electronic device to self-proclaimed microsoldering expert. The results are kinda hilarious. Oh, and spoiler alert! Eddy isn't exactly an STR solution either. I started my 3D printer journey with a CR touch and I can somewhat confidentially say it's an 8 year solution along BL touch. Those are pretty good probes and have three major selling points. They are very reliable, repeatable, completely immune to thermal expansion as they probe the bed physically and setting them up is really easy. Drawbacks? bulky, slow, awkward to position and need to calibration every time the nozzle is changed. Then I had a not so pleasant experience with an inductive sensor that did not have a temperature compensation. F tier, straight to trash. Inductive probe that does have temp compensation is B tier because it's ok accuracy wise, but even bulkier than BL touch and harder to position closer to nozzle. In addition to that, it may have some issues with build plates that have an embedded strong magnets and of course still need recalibration after a nozzle change. Strain gouges that measure bed with a nozzle are B tier because they assume the nozzle is clean, which in my case never is. In addition to that, in order to have an accurate reading, you kinda have to probe the bed with a nozzle that is hot as hell. Not very good for longevity. As a flip side, they are immune to axis twist and nozzle length. In order for it to be usable hands-free, it needs some sort of nozzle cleaning system. With an automatic nozzle cleaning system, it advances to 8 year. But here's the catch. I did try two nozzle cleaning projects. Brush on a servo and a squeegee. And they both sucked. Either there was still some drippage going on after cleaning procedure, or there was some blob that got stuck on a hot end. If it works for you, great. I did not have such luck. And since because of my OCD I have to babysit the first layer anyways, I might as well clean the nozzle right before it moves. I have also tested the accelerometer as a probe, namely this repository. And uh, what can I say? F tier. Not reliable. Ultra hard to set up, had potential, but never worked for me and thanks to those trials, I have now this lovely bald spot on my bed. It was supposed to be detecting a nozzle tap and it kinda worked, just not reliably. Voron tap. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna upset a lot of people with this, but for me it's a C tier. Has all the drawbacks of a strain gouge and more. Heavy. 60 to 100 grams added is a lot compared to like BL touch 10 grams. Also sacrifices printhead rigidity. Not compatible with a lot of printhead except their stealth burner which is already a pretty heavy. Don't get me wrong, it does work but I don't think I would recommend it over a strain gouge. Now my personal favorite, clicky probe and all similar micro switch based probes. That simple ultra precise, immune to temperature and magnetic fields, super lightweight with just two drawbacks. Needs a lot of configuration and needs to have a docking station somewhere. 8 year. I have been using it the most and this was definitely the least painful probe so far. 
Recently, I also found about Clicky00, which aims to solve one more microswitch based problem, which is not needing to calibrate nozzle offset as it's directly under the nozzle. Because of that, it also does not damage the bed with a hot piece of metal. I have not tried it, so I am not sure how it performs, but the idea is really good on paper. Probably closest to S tier I have seen. Unfortunately, it also means it will need some kind of nozzle cleaning apparatus, so I am rather reluctant to give it a go. You can also read here from its author why I placed the Voron tap in C tier. Now let's address the eddy. While a BTT provided me this one free of charge, I had my eyes on Beacon 3D. But their price, especially shipping and import fees, completely threw me off. Then there were clones like Cartographer 3D, which I was not as excited for, since I have heard they had some issues. I wanted to buy Eddie with my own money anyways, but I'm currently in the middle of another project, so when Big Tree Tech contacted me, I straight up told them I won't have any time to do any video in the near future. They send it to me anyways. Let me tell you right off the bat, Eddie is not as precise as microswitch based probes, but it has one advantage over all previously mentioned probes. It is damn fast, especially for making height maps. That one little feature may make it worthwhile, especially if you have a mild OCD like me and want to make a new height map every time you disturb your build plate. Yes, I was doing a new height map pretty much every 3 to 5 prints. It does not need any docking, nor a huge amount of macros. Now what I did to it. I made it flat because it fits my print head better this way. That involved the soldering the coil and soldering wires to those two tiny components. Took me about an hour and I had to use a hot plate, microscope, really tiny soldering iron tip, precision tweezers, hot air station and a lot of dexterity. I really should buy myself some thin NML wires which would make this job a lot easier. In addition to this, I had to resolder a small connector and fix one ripped pad because I jammed it into a clicky docking station which I forgot to remove prior testing. It was no surprise that the probe still works after all those modifications. Funny enough, I've also completely ignored recommendations for coil placement which is supposed to have some space above free from metallic objects. I have tested it both as a Z and stop probe as well as the height map probe and out of 5 tests I did, all of them came out perfectly. Full transparency, I needed to redo the calibration of the axis twist, clean the bed, clean the magnet sticker under the bed and remove a strip of captain tape that was underneath. This whole procedure took me about a day. Installation is truly horrendous and I hope it gets pulled into clipper fast because right now the amount of steps you have to perform just to get it working is insane. For this very reason I'm not gonna explain the whole procedure, just leave the link to the guide I was using with a small asterisk. Before running the LDC calibrate drive current command, you need to make sure to have a force move enabled and manually set kinematic position to something like 200 before the clipper actually allows you to move the bed. If you don't do that, clipper will throw an error. Temperature compensation is probably the worst part. It can easily take an hour of babysitting the printer and I wish there would be some sane defaults baked in. As it stands now, I would say Eddie is probably 8 tier. It is very close to BL touch, maybe slightly less accurate, but has one advantage, speed. Would I recommend it? For that price, yes, but only the USB version. Especially if you have a mild OCD like me and want to have very fresh height maps every couple of prints. Keep in mind that my ID is kinda heavily modified, which means I may have improved it, or made it worse than it was from the factory, or maybe nothing really changed. I will also probably try Clicky00, but that will have to wait until I finish the other big project. Until then, I will keep an eye out for new bed leveling solutions. Maybe someone will come up with a brilliant solutions that will rock my socks off. But for now, I guess we'll have to keep using workarounds. I had some crazy ideas popping in my head before sleep, 
but nothing really that would satisfy me. I'm gonna shut up and leave you to a couple of crazy ones.